let's see let's see what our man had to say about winning he's not our man by the way i do not claim him but you know what it is what it is he's now our president let's see how this speech went are you ready i didn't watch it yesterday you're gonna have to watch it with me and then we can talk about it okay i know it's morning for a lot of americans right now it's 4 30 here in croatia let's start off our morning with a little bit of a buzz from our future president Thank you all very much. This is great. These are our friends. We have thousands of friends on this. They're all my friends. I have lots of friends. I have one friend, two friends, three friends, four friends. Lots of friends. Incredible movement. This was a movement like nobody's ever seen before. And frankly, this was, I believe, the greatest political movement of all time, there's never been anything like this in this country, and maybe beyond. And now it's going to reach a new level of importance because we're going to help our country heal. We're going to help our country heal. We have a country that needs help, and it needs help very badly. We're going to fix our borders. We're going to fix everything about our country. And we made history for a reason tonight. I mean, genuinely, I hope so. May this country heal. May y'all be able to afford groceries, rent, and health care. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what? He is going to be our president. Obviously, we're not being sore losers. We're not going out and protesting. We're not going to have a January 6th on the liberal side of things. Like, that's not how we do things. Okay. We accept it. We get it. The democracy democratized. Okay. We're here. May he be a good president for all of us. Fingers crossed and fingers crossed that he ends up taking a little bit more of a neutral, liberal, centrist perspective, because that's the best we could hope for. The hope is that he doesn't actually go far right. The hope is that we don't do Project 2025. The hope is that we don't do mass deportation. The hope is that we stay a little bit more centrist. OK, that's the best we can hope for. But just a reminder, this is a reflection of all of us back to us. This is what America wanted. So just keep that in mind. And for those of you who are talking about moving out of America, that is a decision you can make. But just remember, no matter where you go, you'll deal with the nuances of what it means to live in a world that isn't America. And there's, it's not always better on the other side. OK, and just a reminder, as an American, you'll be paying double tax. So hear me when I say this as an American who lives in Croatia, I still have to pay American tax. You do not get exempt. You will pay American tax no matter where you are in the world. You have to give up your American passport. And the question is, is a Trump presidency worth giving up your American passport? You will never be able to enter America as a citizen again unless you, you know, become a citizen. You, you'll be an expat, an expatriate. Is that worth it? And that's a question you have to answer because no matter where you go, you will be paying double tax. And the reason is going to be just that. We overcame obstacles that nobody thought possible, and it is now clear that we've achieved the most incredible political thing. Look what happened. Is this crazy? <laughs> He's like, oh, Lord, I did not see this coming. I don't even know if Trump thought he would win. I'll be real with you. I think he thought he was going to lose. He's just like, I can't. <laughs> what happened? I don't think he knew it was coming. I don't think he knew it was going to happen. I really don't. But it's a political victory that our country has never seen before, nothing like this. I want to thank the American people for the extraordinary honor of being elected your 47th president and your 45th president. And every citizen, I will fight for you, for your family and your future. Every single day, I will be fighting for you and with every breath in my body. I will not rest until we have hold on okay wait chat says i think he cheated musk and putin were heavily involved in this election as much as cheating is always a possibility i think we also have to radically accept that america is more racist homophobic and conservative than we want to accept like the left is a minority it is not the majority of people okay the majority of people in america are not progressive they are also racist and misogynistic Kamala was a brown woman. People didn't want to vote for her because they thought her period was still there. She's in menopause. She's 60. Like she's 60. She's not, she's not having a period, you know? And let, I mean, maybe, I don't want to speak for her body. You know what I'm saying? 
So just a reminder that like Trump wouldn't need to cheat to win in racist America. It's America. Like it's America. That's this is America. You know what I mean? So with peace and love, it's getting better every day. And this is a part of the reality that people have to accept is that I'm not that surprised given the way people talk to me, especially because they think I'm on their side. If you're a minority that, that blends pretty well, you know what people are saying to you when they don't think you're a minority. And you're like, oh, oh, you just said that out loud. Like, and a lot of people are saying a lot of things out loud, you know? So just a reminder that I, I think this is exactly what was more probable. I actually was going to be so impressed if America voted for a black woman. I was going to say a black Indian woman. Like I was like, oh, this is, uh, this is kind of amazing. You know, this is kind of amazing. And then it didn't happen. And I was like, okay, okay. Okay. And I, FD signifier said it really funny today. He said, uh, uh, you know, Latinos for Trump. He said, you know, a lot of, um, Latinos think they're white. And a lot of people will also even call them white, like a white Latino. And they'll say like, oh, they voted for Trump. It's like no one's more racist than the immigrant that basically established themselves and feels like they're better than everybody else, which is kind of true. I mean, you know, so many people in my family are immigrants. Obviously, everybody came here during Kennedy's time. My parents, didn't, like my family wasn't here until the Kennedy. Um, so when they all came here and everyone showed up, it, the family split between the conservatives and the Democrats. And most of my family voted Trump this year, including a lot of Assyrians in Michigan, right? Remember that a lot of the Middle Eastern communities in Michigan, they voted Jill Stein or Trump. That was just what happened. So we have to remember that when we're having these conversations, a lot of our communities are more conservative than we let on, which is so American of them, right? It's just where we are in history. Um, chat says, was this FD post or a video? Uh, FD signifier had a stream this morning about the election. So that's what I'm referring to. It was good. You could watch it. And actually, you know, I think he and I are pretty aligned in our assessment of the situation, which is like, this is America. This is where we are. You can leave if you want to, but remember you have to think about what are those consequences? Double tax. You're still an American. If you want to give up your passport and start your life somewhere else, you could do that. But just a reminder, like, the privilege of being assigned to the greatest superpower in the world right now is the privileges that come with that. So just be aware of that, that even as a minority, you are still living in the most privileged country in the world in a lot of ways. As much as it doesn't feel like it, it is still the superpower. So if you want to give that up, you can. But a lot of your family might be there. You're not going to be able to just go home to visit your mom if she's dying or your family if they're sick. Like you have to think about the future as well, which is what I think about. If I gave up my American passport, how much more of an issue would I have visiting my family if they were sick? Because right now I can just go home. There is a limitation, funny enough, because I have to maintain residency in Croatia. So I have a limitation of how long I can go home, but at least I can go home, get to that USA line and go see my family if they're dying. So I'm always thinking about long term stuff. How does this help me help my family? How does how do I prepare for future generations? Right. All right. Good morning, everybody. I see a bunch of people shuffling in this morning. Good morning. I hope you're feeling OK this morning. I know it's probably a big deal for a lot of people, but just a reminder, life goes on and we will adapt. Everybody adapt. You will grow through this. I promise you. It's not like 2016. This is different. There's so much more hope on the horizon, right? Okay. Um, let's go ahead and go back to Trump. Here we are. Delivered the strong, safe and prosperous America that our children deserve and that you deserve. This will truly be the golden age of America. That's what we have to have. This is a magnificent victory for the American people that will allow us to make America great again. Oh, and in addition to having won the battleground states of North Carolina, I love these places, Georgia, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin, I am shook he won all of them. I am. But here we are. Here we are. We are now winning in Michigan, Arizona, Nevada, and Alaska, which would result in us carrying at least 315 electoral votes. But that, but it's much easier doing what the networks did or whoever called it. Wait, wait, wait. You guys literally think, hold on, Chad is saying, there's more less hope now than at 2016. I'm sorry. Do y'all remember 2016? 
because maybe you don't, but it is so much better now than it was in 2016. As much as it feels like it's worse now, it depends on your goals. Actually, it could feel worse to you depending on your goals. But it obviously is better. Representation is better. We're having elected uh, officials that are people of color and trans. We're dealing with more representation in media. Campaigns are working to be more open and inclusive. We're absolutely moving culture forward. Like at the end of the day, 2016 was a much harder world than it is in 2024. But maybe that's where you're at. Maybe that's the perspective you're coming from. I don't know where you are economically. I don't know where you are in your own life. I don't know how old you are. But as somebody who went from mid 20s to mid 30s, you know, I see a lot of great change in the world, a lot of really great voices, a lot of really great opportunities. Obviously, in, a, in the world, like nothing is linear, right? So we're always going to go two steps forward and three steps back, right? We're always going to go back and forth. That's just how the world's going to go, right? Z King says they're saying that because Trump got away with all his crimes and this victory shows he can do whatever he wants. This is America. They love criminals. They just don't like black ones. Oh, I'm like, this is America. We love people that break the law. We founded this country on genocide and breaking the law. America are criminals. America loves white criminals. Of course they loved him. What do you, of course. They look, pfft, sounds about white. Like Sounds about American. Like for me, when I look at America, I say, yeah, this is America. They are you. I think one of my favorite stories out of a America, America's foundation during the cowboy era was a story we went over a few months ago, maybe six months ago. I don't remember of a man who was talking to a progressive woman and the woman said, you know, um, there are there are no like ethical billionaires. And he's like, yeah, definitely not. He's like, my grandpa has like 600 acres of land. I don't remember the number because before there was really uh, accountability, he went and shot all of his neighbors, killed them all and just took their land. And he goes, and that's how I inherited the 600 acres. And I was like, oh. and that's America. America is the land of the free, the land of the gun. They are willing to deny gun, like any kind of gun reform because they're so afraid of your guns getting taken away. They'd rather risk your children's lives at school than God forbid, put some regulation down. America loves a criminal. They just like the white ones only. And so a part of us has to realize like Trump getting elected is just showing us what we've been saying. How can progressives or leftists be saying America's racist and then be shocked at elected Trump? I'm sorry. Did we expect something else different in a racist country? So I think it is better now in a world in which a lot of people are having the realization that, okay, like, this is where America is. This is your opportunity to be introspective away from the bubbles and just say, OK. This is where I am in living history. I am literally in living history. And I agree. I wanted Kamala to win. I well, like Kamala is my favorite. She really should have won. Honestly, she should be the top. I love Kamala. La, la, la. She's beautiful. She could step on me. Honestly, I shouldn't have won. I wish Trump had come out. You know, I don't get me wrong. I could I could meme about this all day. And I probably can. You know what I mean? It would have been great if she had won. But she didn't. And look, if she had won, I kind of would have been shocked because I'm like, are we sure that's right? Are we sure America was ready for this kind of a change? Because it would have been a change. It would have been one that would have been really historic. But you know what was even more historic? Living through it, seeing it happen. None of our ancestors can say they saw a black woman run for the presidency, but we can. No one can say they watch an Indian woman, a biracial woman run for the presidency, but we can. We are living history. It was never going to be easy. And this is just the first moment of many to have opportunities to change this country. And that's it. Like we are living in a significant time in the same way it was when Barack got elected. We, we were here. We watched it happen. And so this is a very big deal. And now you will say, well, if Barack got elected, how racist can American be? Oh, don't get me wrong. America's racist, but it also is misogynistic. So of course, Barack Obama won over Kamala Harris because Barack Obama is a man. Okay. So when we're having these conversations, I want to give you hope and optimism because I promise you the greatest part of knowing you're alive today is knowing that you are sitting here during the, the during like such significant changes in history 
that your kids are going to look back. Your family's kids are going to look back and go, oh, my God, did you live during that time? And we're going to say, yes, I did. Yes, we did. And we are doing it right now. And so we have to be the adults in the room who have the optimism and the hope because there are teenagers in the room who feel lost and they're children. So let's not feel lost as adults when there are children who need us to be optimistic and strong and hopeful for the future. And remember that all of this is on the backs of our ancestors who came before us, who struggled way more than I have in different ways. We all struggle, but they didn't do their work. So I would sit here and continue being afraid for those kids back there. Like these kids are looking to us to be optimistic. And I think you should do that. Okay. There are real teenagers right now on the internet, freaking out way worse than you are. And they have no hope. So let's voice some optimism for them because they're really going to need it. Okay. Scooter with the super chat says the best thing we can do right now is find out where our money is going. Use our purchasing power accordingly and continue to vote with our money. Hey, minorities, as much as we don't feel like we have a lot of the money, some of us, we make a bag. So let's continue to make that bag. Let's continue to save and focus for the future. And let's be optimistic for the kids right now, because that's who I'm focusing on. I want those trans kids, those gay kids, those black kids, those brown kids, those whoever kids, kids with immigrant parents or kids with undocumented parents that are freaking out. I want them to feel safe as much as possible in a world that feels like it's going to fight for them because right now trump is only going to be here for four years hopefully unless he goes crazy and actually does become a dictator let's assume he'll be here for four years we can do a lot of good things for our communities in four years a lot all right hold your breath we're going to go back to <laughs> trump okay so hold your breath it's going to get crazy over here okay just like hold, get ready we're going to switch over because there was no other path. There was no other path to victory. We also have won the popular vote. That was great. Very proud of it. Bro. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now winning the popular vote was very nice. Very nice, I will tell you. It's a great, a great feeling of love. We have a great feeling of love in this very large room with unbelievable people standing by. Lots of love. I would say gay love. Lots of love. Very gay. My side, these people have been incredible. They've made the journey with me and we're going to make you very happy. We're going to make you very proud of your vote. I hope that you're going to be looking back someday and say that was one of the truly important moments of my life when I voted for this group of people beyond the president, this group of great people. America has given us an unprecedented and powerful mandate. We have taken back control of the Senate. Wow, that's good. And the Senate races in Montana, Nevada, Texas, Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin, the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. We're all won by the MAGA movement. They helped so much. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so is it me or does it just seem like he doesn't know what to say? Mm, I never know if Trump knows what he's going to say, but Trump has been well liked as a character for a really long time, especially by men. We just watched the McMahon documentary with WWE and Trump has an era in that in which a, a lot of young men who are now older adults, Gen Xers, they watch Trump. They grew up with Trump and they loved him. Then they love him now. What's really interesting, excuse me. It was really interesting is growing up. My parents always hated Trump, saw him as a philander and an unethical person. And now they've been Trump voters two elections in a row. Well, I guess three elections in a row, but they've been Trump voters. And that's kind of weird to see is I understand if you were a Trumper your whole life because you loved him as a personality. But the fact that conservatives who hated him their whole lives because they thought he was just a horrible person hanging out with all these bad men. Now they're voting for him. Look, there's nothing I want more than my conservative family to feel safe and to feel like they have hope. I want my conservative family to have hope for their future. But I also want everybody else to feel that way. I want every American to feel hopeful about the future. And sometimes I think the conservatives in our lives forget 
that they're running on campaigns that offer little to no hope for so many of their family members. And it's hard to have those conversations with them because you're looking at them like your platform isn't giving us hope. And they're looking at us like your platform is scary to us. And we're looking at each other like we're afraid of each other. And so we have to have a real introspective moment to decide how am I as the, as a person, as a consciousness going to move forward with my life, regardless of how chaotic the world gets. Please remember with peace and love that Palestinians are being blown to pieces every day. And God for like God that I don't believe in forgive all of you for thinking that, that in any comparison, this what's happening now could ever be as bad. Like right now you are in a privileged country. There are not bombs coming to your front doors. You are not being displaced. You are being challenged. So rise up to this challenge with grace and compassion because Palestinians are doing it every day. They are rising up with compassion and love. They are asking the world to help them. Okay. They are trying to maintain their dignity. They are trying to be beacons of hope for their children. Okay. And I look to the Palestinian people to remember, I need to be that optimistic. I need to be that aware. I need to be that positive. I need to be that loving. I need to remember that regardless of how hard it seems, I am sitting in a privileged, very nice apartment in Croatia with three monitors and an audience in front of me. That at the end of the day, like, I don't know what it's like to be displaced from my home. I don't know what it's like to have a baby who was born before this, you know, genocide started, who's malnutrition, so malnutrition, has no male nutrition, nutrition. Oh my God, help me guys. It's so lacking in resources. Thank you for the nutrition that they're not growing. These babies aren't growing. American babies are growing. We have malnutrition. Now, thank you, chat, trying to help me. You know how I am with pronouncing words. Thank you. Malnourished. Thank you. Malnourished. I got it. It clicked. Thank you. These babies are so malnourished that they're not growing. The hope for America is that our babies can at least grow, right? So let's kind of use that to motivate us to remember to be optimistic for our kids, right? Fishy says, what would you say? to the thought that you have the privilege to be an optimist because you aren't one of the minorities in America that risks being displaced by further policy changes. Um, you mean because I don't live in America or because, I mean, I don't know what that means, right? Like I am privileged. Absolutely. But my optimism comes from a place of realism, not because of privilege. I am realistic, but I also believe I'm an evolved animal. My optimism comes from my biology, my understanding of that I'm an evolved animal, right? And I think that's the biggest part of it all. She says, because you aren't an immigrant or trans, et cetera. I mean, I'm not sure what Trump's policies will in, like impact, but I am still a woman with reproductive rights and concerns. I'm still on birth control. I still might need an abortion. I'm queer. I'm disabled. I feel like Trump being president might impact my life in a way, but I'm also not living in America because I'm in a country that maybe does better for me, even though it's still homophobic, even though they have their problems. So we're all going to be impacted in some ways, uh, right? I don't know how much Trump is going to impact these communities. I don't know yet. We don't know, but obviously some people will be impacted more than others, right? Obviously. I think that's, it's important to recognize that for me, I, my optimism comes from my relationship with reality, not my, I don't care what other people are doing ever because what they're doing. I mean, I do care. Okay. If you're new to my audience, I do care what people are doing, but for myself, when I'm alone in my own space, when I'm alone with my consciousness, it's not, it's not my business what the world does as a voter, as a community member. Yes. I want to be a participant. I'm here right now streaming. Okay. Okay. I voted. I'm participating. I pay taxes. So I just want to like, if you're new to my audience, because I see we have a lot of people here this morning. Obviously, when I'm alone in my apartment, when you're all alone in your home, when you're in your shower, when you're with your family, when you're hugging your kids, the question is, how do you feel about existence? How do you feel about your relationship to reality? So my optimism is built off that reality, if that helps. Right. But of course, I'm privileged. Like, of course, I am. I also. I. I want to give people an opportunity to be as privileged in any way that I can. I want to uplift people to be just as privileged as I am. And I hope that everyone can feel that way. And also know that no matter how privileged you are, you do struggle. Okay. So I don't want to take away from anyone's struggle, but
but I would love to uplift America to be middle class privileged. What a joy that would be just to start there, just to start there and say, okay, I'm here. Right. I think that's important. Let's see. Um, is Brittany's parents immigrants? My parents are from Iraq. They're from Iraq and they're Assyrian. So they're also Catholic Iraqis, which is interesting. And my family started immigrating here around Kennedy. Yeah. Yeah. Does that answer your question? I hope it does. Let me know. But either way, we all make decisions. So the question is, how are you going to take power into your own hands and make different decisions? So one thing that I do, you don't have to do this. One thing that I do is I make sure that I have access to birth control. And I know that's going to get difficult because the possibilities of 2025 are so scary. A project 2025 are so scary. And I know that. So you have to move with thoughtfulness again, because I come from an immigrant background, because I've moved country, because I'm one of those people who, you know, even if I got five dollars in my bank account, like I try to find ways to survive in the world because I do see it as like a survival game. My brain says, OK, if I'm in a state that's going to deny me health care, I'm going to leave my family behind and go to a state that's going to give me that health care. That's a decision you can make. You don't have to make it right. But it's a decision I would make. This, I'm telling you what I would do. I would take my last $10, which I've done so many times in my life, and I will pack up everything I have, and I will find my way into a different place, find a different job, get as many roommates as I need to get, and I would be in a place that benefits me. The question is, weigh your pros and cons and ask yourself, what actually benefits me? Because I know when you're scared, you'll make decisions that sound really reasonable. Don't make decisions when you're scared. Make decisions when you're calm. Make sure you're not disre dysregulated. Make sure you're in a really calm space and then make some really good decisions about your life. Because I promise you, the one thing you can do is do is make good decisions. That's the one thing you can do in your life is make good decisions. So take a deep breath and make a good decision even when the government doesn't. Make a good decision even when Trump doesn't. Make a good decision even when past you didn't. Make a good decision now, right? Okay. Ren says, what if you can't get a job to begin with because you're transgender? I think I'm okay. So first, everybody calm down, right? Like first we need to be calm because real, realistically, look, okay. <laughs> at the end of the day, everyone has this fear. It's a good question to ask, but you're living in a very diverse nation that has a lot of protections for trans people in certain places. Okay. We have to go to the places where safe. If you're willing to say you're going to move out of America, try moving within America first. I know there's like this. I'm going to leave America. Fuck America. You could also just move states. OK, you could also just move to California, Washington, Colorado, like move states. And then you can talk about moving countries. Trust me, a lot easier to move states than countries. So with peace and love, if everyone's really going to sit here and talk about, I'm going to move countries, girl, move states first, girl. Okay. And then we can talk about countries. If you're going to move countries though, I hear Canada is really great for women and minorities, but not perfect. Huh? Cause nowhere is. Okay. So I feel like first and foremost, we have to make sure that we're not giving into our fear. Yes. Yeah. yeah thank you. Brittany always says fear is the root of all evil. Don't spread the fear. Fear makes you insane as does a lack of sleep and not eating. So let's make sure we're not giving into our fear because it will, it will put us out of our wisdom. We want to be very wise in our suffering and we want to make good decisions. Okay. There are a lot of really good places in the States that will protect your rights as a minority. Go to those places and do what it takes. But listen to me when I say this, it won't be easy. You might lose your family and friends. Your family and friends might not follow you. You guys know my family and I live in all different parts of the U S I live in Croatia because at the end of the day, we're too different. We couldn't live together in the same place. I can't be neighbors with homophobic, transphobic tra Trump voters, even if they're related to me and I love them so much, but I just, I can't, it's not good for my mental health. I gotta move, I gotta migrate, I gotta be somewhere different. So it's really, you know, start with yourself, make good decisions for you, right? Okay, now hold your breath once again, because we're going back to Trump. Here we go. And in those cases, every one of them, we worked with the senators, they were tough races. And I mean, the, the number of victories in the Senate was absolutely incredible. And 
We did teller rallies. We did teller rallies with each one of them. And sometimes we did two or three for — and it was amazing to look at all of those victories. Nobody expected that. Nobody. So I just wanted to thank you very much for that. And we have — you have some great senators and some great new senators. And it also looks like we'll be keeping control of the House of Representatives. And I want to thank Mike Johnson. I think he's doing a terrific job. Terrific job. I want to also thank my beautiful wife, Melania, First Lady. Melania. Melania. Melania Trump. Kamalia Melania. Oh, Lord. Who has the number one best-selling book in the country? Can you believe that? Okay, at least he's giving credit to his wife, I guess. Yay for women. <laughs> Yo, she is pretty, though. She is pretty. Oh, no, she's done a great job. Works very hard. Works very hard to help people. So I just want to thank her. But I want to thank my whole family, my amazing children. And they are amazing children. Now, we all think our children are amazing. Everybody here thinks their children are amazing, but... That's a good thing when you think they are. But Don, Eric, Ivanka, Tiffany, Baron. Whoa, he remembered his kids' names? That's very impressive, honestly. I did not think he'd remember Tiffany. <laughs> That's not funny. But I, I did not think he would remember his kids' names. <laughs> Laura, Jared, Kimberly, Michael, thank you all. What a wow. What a Amazing. <laughs> My father-in-law, Victor, is tremendous, and we miss very much Melania's mother, Amalia. Oh. We miss Amalia, don't we, huh? She would be very happy right now, standing on this stage. She'd be so proud. She was a great woman, that one. Beautiful inside and out. She was a great woman. I want to be uh, the first to congratulate our great, now I can say, Vice President-elect of the United States. Oh. Ugh, you know, J.D. Vance is just a few years older than me, bro. I bet I could give him a noogie. Okay, he's so good, bro. I bet I could beat him up, bro, with my with my muscles, bro. I bet I could just, like, you know what I mean, J.D. Vance? Give him a swirly in the toilets, bro, like it's 1999, bro. And his absolutely remarkable and beautiful wife, Ushabez. Did he pronounce it right? Did he pronounce it right? Because shout out if he did, bro. He's been practicing. I can tell. And he is a feisty guy, isn't he? You know, I've said, go into the enemy camp. And you know, the enemy camp is certain networks. And a lot of people don't like to, sir, do I have to do that? He just goes, OK. Which one? CNN, MSDNC? He'll say, all right, thank you very much. He actually looks like He's still, like the only guy I've ever seen. He really looks forward to it. And then he just goes and absolutely obliterates them. Say a couple of words. Oh, uh, great. Well. Well, Mr. President, I appreciate you allowing me to join you on this incredible journey. I thank you for the trust that you placed in me. And I think that we just witnessed the greatest political comeback in the history of the United States of America. And under President Trump's leadership, we're never going to stop fighting for you, for your dreams, for the future of your children. And after the greatest political comeback in American history, we're going to lead the greatest economic comeback in American history. Let's go. Let's go, bitch. Let's go. I pray to the goddess on high, okay, that they do revamp the economy in the U.S., that the dollar is strong and that Americans no longer struggle to go grocery shopping for their kids. I am 100 percent behind them if they do this for Americans, okay? Okay? 100 billion percent. May all parents with all types of children and all types of needs not struggle buying food for their kids or getting medical care needs met for their children, okay? If they can do this, I'll be one point less upset. Okay? I'm here for that. I'm here for that optimism. Let's go, okay? History under Donald Trump's leadership. Thank you very much. He's, 
He's turned out to be a good choice. I took a little heat at the beginning, but he was, uh, I, knew, I knew the brain was a good one, about as good as it gets. And we love the family, and we're going to have a great four years, and we're going to turn our country around, make it something very special. Lost very that, special. Lost that little. It lost that little. We're going to make him special like I'm special, like J.D. Vance is special, especially when he was fucking that couch. Little, uh, that little thing called special, we have to make it so. We're going to make this so great. It's, gonna, it's the greatest country and potentially the greatest country in the world by far, and right now we're going to just work very hard to get all of that back. We're going to make it the best it's ever been. We can do that. We just, if we had to wait longer, I don't know. It was going bad, and it was going bad fast. We're going to have to seal up those borders, and we're going to have to let people come into our country. We want people to come back in, but we have to we have to let them come back in, but they have to come in legally. They have to come in legally. Let me also express my tremendous appreciation for Susie and Chris, the job you did. Susie, come, Susie, come here. Come here, Susie. Don't tell a woman to come, okay? Chris, come here, Chris. Susie likes to stay sort of in the back, let me tell you. The ice maiden, we call her the ice maiden. Right? Come here, Chris. Chris. Come here, Chris. Susie likes to stay in the background. She's not in the background. This was unexpected, but I just want to thank, obviously, President Trump for this journey. It was a great one, um, and he's a hell of a candidate, and he's going to be a hell of a great 47th president. And this team that we had, the best team, and, of course, even my boss, Susie Wiles, the best. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you, Susie. Look at this, she's shy. I've never seen her be shot before. Susie, uh, they've been, they're great. Everybody up here is great, everybody up Let's go, thank you so much, Chess says, I'm so happy I found your channel. It's devastating news this morning, but still have a lot to be thankful for. Thank you for the reminder. I'm sure I'll be turning to you over the next four years. Okay, but just like a heads up, girls, if you're new to my channel and welcome. We are philosophy focused for a reason, because I think politics is often about winning, it's not about morals, and I want people to stay Fed fast in their joy, even when politics gets messy, because you exist outside of political bubbles. You exist outside of politics. You exist outside of racism. You exist outside of homophobia. You exist outside of the constructs. So just a reminder, if you're new to my audience, and I know it's, you know, I know this is very hard for a lot of people right now. You exist outside of this mess. You exist out of other people's perceptions of you. You are so much more than how the world perceives you. And you know that, and I know that. But you need to remind yourself of that every day in a world that is trying to tell you who you are. Make sure you only listen to the voices that actually see you, because if you keep listening to the voices that don't see you, you're going to feel objectified and demoralized. And your kids, your nieces, your nephews, the people you might teach at the schools where you are educators, the, do the patients you might see as doctors, the clients you might have as like accountants or even people at our grocery stores, you have got to remain steadfast in your understanding of yourself. Because everybody in the world will try to tell you who you are in order to kill your spirit. Don't let them kill your spirit, okay? We're not giving these people any of our tears. We're only giving them our compassion. Because that's the only thing we can do is to be the people that we would want them to be. Good neighbors. Okay, so I'm going to remain a good neighbor because I always have been. Okay, I make cookies for my neighbors, whether they're Trump voters or, cons or, or liberals. Okay. But at the end of the day, it is about compassion for yourself and for others. And this is what we feel like they don't have is compassion. But I think, I think they do in their own way. It just translates very badly because they don't know how to extend it to people that are different from them. So do that first. And then you'll see why it's so hard for them because it's hard to look at a person that wants to take away your civil rights and to show them any kind of compassion. Because they're afraid of you the way you're afraid of them. The only difference is that I would argue, technically in a world with Kamala Harris as president, everybody gets options. In a world with Trump, certain people get options. So I kind of feel like maybe one side has a little bit more reasonable fear than the other side. But you know what? Fear is fear is fear. Okay, fear is fear is fear. Chat says, I refuse to give these people compassion. Well, the world is a reflection of what you put into it. That's what karma means. Karma isn't you do good, you get good. It's your life reflected back to you. So you will get the same reflected back to you, what you put into the world. So you can make that decision. You are allowed to make that decision. 
Everybody up here is very special. But uh, the Trump — yeah, who did you say? Oh, let me tell you, we have a new star. A star is born, Elon. Oh, Elon. You know what? <laughs> Autism represent? <laughs> What, immigrant represent? We love an autistic immigrant, okay? <laughs> uh, he is. Now he's an amazing guy. We were sitting together tonight. You know, he spent two weeks in Philadelphia and different parts of Pennsylvania campaigning. You know, he sent the rocket up two weeks ago, and I saw that rocket, and I saw it coming down. I saw it. It was when it left, it was beautiful, shiny white. When it came down, it didn't look so pretty. It was going 10,000 miles an hour, and it was burning like hell. I said, I'm sorry, I zoned out. Is he talking about Elon's penis? What is he talking about? That's a joke. I know he's talking about his penis. <laughs> what happened to your paint job? He said, we've never made a paint that could withstand that kind of heat. And, uh, but I saw it come down and turn around. And it was, you know, it's like 22 stories tall, by the way. It looks a little smaller than that, but it's big. What do you, what do you mean it's small? Trump? Trump never say it's small. It's big. It's very big. Like my compassion for the trans. The trans Machiavellian mothers. Oh, yes, don't forget I exist, even though I'm Canadian. I also have opinions about Trump, this very interesting man who's not narcissistic at all. Did you hear Jordan Peterson talk about how Trump doesn't fall to narcissistic behavior? And I was like, what? Jordan! <laughs> Jordan. Jordan, stop it, Jordan. <laughs> And it came down and down, and you saw that fire burning. And, and I'm saying, only Elon can do this. It must be an. The burnings from the STIs, which we do not shame. Lots of people have STIs, lots of people be burning. But we do not shame it, but that's what the burning is from. We need some ointment, we need some medication. We're not going to shame it, but that's what it's from. Elon. And I tell the story, I told it last night. I had a man on the phone, I had the screen muted, no sound. I was talking to a very important man, happens to be here. And that very important guy, one of the most important people in, I would say, the country, actually. But, you know, I was president, and now it looks like I was going to be maybe president again, so I figured I could ask him to hold. You know what? Considering how many Republicans are gay but are in the closet, it would be kind of amazing if Trump could make being gay cool and then all the Republicans could come out as gay finally because a lot of y'all's husbands are sleeping with each other. I've seen your all camp and trip TikToks. OK, so maybe we can get to the point where everybody can just admit they're gay already and bisexual, pansexual. I think most of the world be queer. You know how it is. And I think we should just have that conversation and we could stop being shocked when the Grindr app crashes during the, you know, Republican National Convention. If we could if Trump could make gay cool again, OK, make America gay and cool again, like just start with the gays. If we could just get them on board, you know what I mean? They say 70% of Americans aren't, you know, anti-gay marriage, but a lot of them aren't ready to accept the trans experience. People move slowly over time. So I asked him to hold. And because, especially because you're going to be president again, they hold. So I took the phone down and I'm looking at the screen. I'm seeing this crazy thing that's going around and coming down. It looks like it's going to crash into the gantry. And I said, oh, no. And I said, do me a favor. Do you mind holding for a couple of minutes? I want to see this. I thought it was a space age movie or something. I put the phone down, bed part, I didn't pick it up for 45 minutes and he was holding. But this spaceship came down and I saw those engines firing and it looked like it was over, it was gonna smash. And then I saw the fire pour out from the left side and I put it straight and it came down so gently and then it wrapped those arms around it and it held it. And just like you hold your baby at night, your little baby. And it was a beautiful thing to see and I called Elon. I said, Elon, was that you? He said, yes, it was. I said, who else can do that? Can Russia do it? No. Can China do it? No. Can the United States do it other than you? No. Nobody can do that. I said, that's why I love you, Elon. That's great. And you know, when we had the tragic hurricane, Helene, and it hit, in particular, it hit North Carolina, they were really devastated, the water. This was a big water, as big as we've ever seen, water hurricane. It built lakes out of nothing. Fields became lakes. and. And the danger was unbelievable. And the people from North Carolina came to me and they said, would it be possible, at all possible, for you to speak to Elon Musk? We need Starlink. I said, what's Starlink? It's a form of communication. So I called Elon. And I'll tell you what he had. And it was very dangerous. People would die. They had no communication. All the wires were down. I called Elon Musk. I said, oh, my God, he just he's spending a lot of time on Elon, bro. 
Like, I don't get me wrong. Like, he's being coherent and everything. But a part of me is like, why are we talking about Elon this much? Like, I get it. You said the first story. Why are we going into a second story? But this speech is almost done. And a lot of it has been dedicated to Elon. So I'm a little confused. Maybe our boy got ADHD. Maybe he got ADHD. Next, he's going to say, and then I was playing league and I almost lost, but I'm platinum and no one can be as good at league as I am as at league because, you know, I play league a lot and Melania is waiting for me to go to bed, but I can't because I'm platinum in league. That's what I'm waiting for. That's I'm waiting for that. OK, <laughs> Elon, you have something called Starlink. Is that right? Yes, I do. What the hell is it? He said. It's a communication system that's very good. I said, Elon, they need it really, really badly in North Carolina. Can you get it? He had that there so fast, it was incredible. So, and it was great. It saved a lot of lives. He saved a lot of lives. But he's a character, he's a special guy, he's a super genius. We have to protect our geniuses. We don't have that many of them. We have to protect our super genius. America's very stupid, no geniuses, just Elon. Geniuses, I want to thank some of the guys, you know, we have, up here today, the U.S. Open champion. He's uh, fantastic. Alfred, slightly longer than me. It's a little bit longer than me. Just a little bit. Bryson DeChambeau is up here someplace. Yo, why am I so impressed he's remembering everybody's names? <laughs> why am I like, when did Trump learn people's names? Is it because he just fucks up on people's names like on purpose so much? I assume he doesn't know what anyone's name is. <laughs> what happened to Bryson? Where is he? Bryson. Oh. He was shot. He's hitting balls. Oh, he's on the way. He's hitting balls. Bryson. He's teabagging the balls. He's hitting the balls. He's licking the balls. You know, you could do so many things to balls. Oh, look at him. <laughs> he had a great, he's a, got a great career going. Great US Open, Bryson. That's a fantastic job. And we also have a man, Dana White, who has done some job. Oh my God, Dana White? <laughs> Next, Joe Rogan. Next, all of the podcast bros all appear at once talking about absolutely nothing. What? He's a tough guy. <laughs> so Dana started UFC. And uh, can you, do you mind if I use your, nobody wanted to give him a rinse because they said it's a rough sport, a little rough. And uh, I helped him out a little bit and I went and they said, this is the roughest sport I've ever seen, but I began to like it and he loved it and nobody's done a better job in sports. And, and you know, he's a very uh, motivational kind of a guy, what he does, he gets these fighters and they, they really go at it. And it's become one of the most successful sports enterprises anywhere at any time, it's doing so well. I'd like to ask Danny just to say a couple of words because people love to hear from him. Dana, nobody deserves this more than him and nobody deserves this more than his family does. This is what happens when the machine comes after you. What you've seen over the last several years, this is what it looks like. Couldn't stop him. He keeps going forward. He doesn't quit. He's the most resilient, hardworking man I've ever met. Oh my God, breathe. Sorry, Marsha, I accidentally muted you. My bad. Um... Let me let me just tell you, this is off brand Joe Rogan. That's hilarious, by the way. So Dana White is so interesting to me only because he is and him and Joe Rogan. I can't believe Joe Rogan. I mean, I can believe it. I stopped watching Joe Rogan a while ago. But when Joe, Joe Rogan became, I don't know what it was. I, Cause I remember being so in love with Joe Rogan. And then there was like a switch, probably, probably the start of COVID or maybe a year into COVID, honestly. There was like that big switch where I was like, oh, my man kind of a conspiracy theorist. I don't like conspiracy theorists. I know Joe Rogan is always open to conspiracy theories, but it gives me anxiety. But Dana White is a representation of another boy bubble that is adjacent to Joe Rogan and everybody else. But he him being here right now at this speech is blowing my mind a little bit because like, why are you here? Like, what did you do? Why are you here? I know he was campaigning for Trump, but this is just a UFC guy. So, like, why are you here? But he does represent a lot of boy bubbles. He does represent relationships with Joe Rogan. Like, this is kind of like having Joe Rogan here. Only it's Dana White. Because Dana is always with Aiden Ross. He's always with these Twitch boys. He's always... The amount of money this man is putting towards people like Trump is very interesting. But it's also, at the same time, like, what are you doing here? It's kind of weird. Like, I kind of wonder with... Kam Wait... Chat saying, just wait. Oh my God, what's about to happen? It gets more wacky. We only have a minute left of this. We, this thing is almost done. 
Wait, was this speech longer? I only have a 20 minute speech. Did he make a longer than 20 minute speech? Okay, let's finish it. I met in my life. His family are incredible people. This is karma, ladies and gentlemen. He deserves this. They deserve it as a family. I, I, I want to thank. How much coke are you on, bro? Some people, real quick. I want to thank the Nelt Boys, Aiden Ross. Um... <laughs> Dizzy, that's so funny. Oh fuck, that's funny. Uh, uh, Theo Vaughn, bustle with the boys. Theo Vaughn, uh, yeah, the Theo Vaughn. You know whose favorite uh weed is um cocaine. You know Theo Vaughn. I love love cocaine. Love Theo Vaughn. But what? Last but not least, the mighty and powerful Joe Rogan. Wow, wow, you, there America. it is. He's Joe Rogan. Uh, my my better looking twin. Thank you. Have a good night. Bro, I wonder if like literally Aiden Ross just came in his pants, bro. Like, <laughs> did Theo even want this? Check. <laughs> Does the Theo at home right now? Like, what's happening? I don't know why I always got the impression that Theo wasn't a Trumper. Even though he had Trump on, I didn't quite imagine that he was like a Trumper. But he, I don't watch Theo like that, you know, so I don't know. I always imagined Theo was a little bit more liberal than that. You know, God, that's wild. That is a piece of work. No, he's an amazing, he's really an amazing guy. But most of all, I want to thank the millions of hardworking Americans across the nation who have always been the heart and soul of this really great movement. Okay, that's, that's the speech I have. Is there a longer speech? All the speeches are like 20, 25 minutes. So I think this one's 26 minutes. Okay, hold on. I promise you. Nothing will stop me from keeping my word to you, the people. Okay, hold on. An amazing guy. But most of all, I want to thank the millions of hardworking Americans across the nation who have always been the heart and soul of this really great movement. We've been through so much together, and today you showed up in record numbers to deliver a victory like really, I probably like no other. This was something, this was something special. And we're going we're gonna to pay you back. We're going to do the best job. We're going to... We're going to turn it around. It's got to be turned around. It's got to be turned around. Did he get a facelift? Not that I think he did, but his skin's kind of looking nice. Did he get a beauty guru from YouTube or TikTok to help him out with his makeup? Isn't he, isn't he looking a little younger? What's up with that? They must have done, like, I, I'm all about it, girl. Get a facelift, right? But I think, I think he got, like, a little facelift done or something. I swear. Fillers? Oh, maybe he got some Botox, bro. Good for him. Men should get Botox around fast and we're going to turn it around we're going to do it in every way with so many ways but we're going to do it in every way this will forever be remembered as the day the american people regained control of their country they gain control of their country yeah maybe that's the feeling that every politician wants to give every people is like you are in control of the country and to be fair, Trump does a really good job at instilling so much fear. He uses fear as a platform so much that his constituents do feel so afraid, right? And so it makes sense that it makes sense that he's now saying, "Look, I'm going to give you the power. I'm going to put it in your hands again." That's a good man. That's good branding right there. Like make them so afraid that they have to pick you, or they'll feel like their universe is ending, which is kind of interesting. You know, and like Harris ran on a much more optimistic campaign, a much more positive platform. Interesting. Hmm. I wonder how different it would have been if those 12 million voters came out, if they would have gone Trump or Harris. It's hard to say. So I just want to say that. Shout out to Fishy who gifted a membership. Woo woo. Congratulations to Nova who got it. Let's go. On behalf of this great group of people, these are hardworking people. These are fantastic people. And we can add a... Uh, a few names like Robert F. Kennedy Jr. He came out. And he's going to help make America healthy again. Oh, I love it when men are in charge of health care. That's always worked out. Bobby, 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 Bobby. 
And now he's a great guy, and he really means it. He wants to do some things, and we're going to let him go to it. I just said, but, Bobby, leave the oil to me. We have more liquid gold, oil and gas. We have more liquid Bobby, we know you love the bears. Focus on the bears, eating the bears, spreading the bears' cheeks. That's what he loves, bears. Do you guys know the bear story? <laughs> there was a dead bear. He put it in his car to skin it and eat it later, but realized he was running out of time and just put it back in like Central Park. I remember where in New York he dumped it. He just dumped the bear back outside. And I was like, what are you doing? Like, who sees a dead bear in the road and goes like, I'm going to eat that. Sir? Ma'am? Sir? <laughs> Liquid gold in any country in the world, more than Saudi Arabia. We have more than Russia. Bobby, stay away from the liquid gold. Other than that, go have a good time, Bobby. Well, we're going to be paying down debt. We're going to be reducing taxes. We have we can do things that nobody else can do. Nobody else is going to be able to do it. China doesn't have what we have. Nobody has what we have. But we have the greatest people also. Maybe that's the most important thing. This campaign, this campaign has been so historic in so many ways. We've Built the biggest, the broadest, the most unified coalition. Shoulders so broad, it makes you want to cry come either one. Really, why didn't Kamala Harris make a speech? Like, genuinely, I'm just asking because I was a little confused. People were waiting and she didn't come out to make a speech. And I didn't like that a bit because I really wanted to see or hear from her. I think that would have been so nice to prepare us for maybe a next time she ran. Aim, thank you so much with, for the super chat. Says Trump just used the populist playbook. Same thing H Dogs did in Germany. It's effective but hollow. Yeah. I mean, gosh, running on that, it just evokes so much emotion from people, right? Chess says, I'd like to think she's plotting something. I mean, I'd like to think she is too. Maybe she's out here trying to prove how he didn't actually win. But at the end of the day, it is what it is, right? Like, I would have liked for her to have made that speech. I mean, ultimately, it's not, you know, always the case and then sometimes like people don't even admit they lost the election at all you know so maybe it's that maybe she didn't make her speech for a reason though i don't know because again usually this stuff takes a bit but i guess i don't know it's hard to say why she didn't do it i can't read her mind um but i th i think she will eventually have to say something right we'll eventually need her to say something right but I don't know why. And you guys assuming it's indicative, indicative of her character. I just think like, what are you, 12? She's a grown up. She knows what's at stake here. I don't think it's indicative of anything. I don't think we know why she did it. Right? Like she should have come out, but that's from our perspective. I don't know why she didn't. So if she's going to come out today, that's also great. But again, like what we want and what makes sense. Because again, I'm not a politician. Right? Like I'm not a politician. I don't know what makes sense for a politician. I don't know what's going to, what makes sense for the people, right? I don't know what makes sense for them, but I would be curious on what that's about. Or maybe it's the point that we're all kind of desperate to hear what she's going to say so more people will tune in. Maybe that's the point. Maybe, that's true though, because I'm so eager to hear from her that like I will tune in even more. So maybe it's that, you know, we'll see what happens. We're, we're still in the first morning of, I hope that she does come out, hopefully even during this stream so we can watch it live, right? They've never seen anything like it in all of American history. They've never seen any young and old men and women, rural and urban. And we had them all helping us tonight. When you think, I mean, I was looking at it. I was watching it. They had some great analysis of the people that voted for us. Nobody's ever seen anything like that. It came from they came from all quarters, union, non-union, African-American, Hispanic, American, Asian, American, Arab, American, Muslim, American. We had everybody and it was beautiful. It was a historic realignment uniting citizens of all backgrounds around. I don't think it felt like that for a lot of people. Like, I don't think it felt like, oh, we were all uniting and finally coming together, right? Okay, oh, thank you, Figure says, U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris will deliver a speech conceding defeat in the presidential election of Donald Trump at 6 p.m., 2300 GMT on Wednesday. Two sources told Reuters. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay. Okay, that's great. Okay, that's great. Okay, I love that. Um, then we'll look forward to it. I, I think that, that's good. And I think it's good that it's a little bit more put together. I think it would have been nice for her to come out, but I think it's probably also in her favor to be a little bit more organized and presentable. So, okay, I'm excited uh, for her to come out. Yeah, chat says, Brittany, what are, the, what are the next steps? If you have any thoughts on that topic, the next steps are to remain positive 
and live your life to the best and the fullest until you die. The next steps are to be reasonable with your choices, to make decisions while you're calm and regulated, to accept that you might have strong feelings and it might dysregulate you. Take a moment to breathe before making any big decisions about your life. The next steps forward are to be optimistic and positive for your kids, the kids in your lives, to remain steadfast and focused on your own values and remember to be the person you want to see in the world. The focus moving forward is to remain joyful and compassionate and to hope for the best and to do right by your community in the way that makes sense to you, right? So move forward with compassion and joy to the best of your ability. RL, thank you so much for the super chat says, hope Trump raises pr prices so much they hate him. You know, we'll see what happens. I'm obviously concerned for Americans. I don't want Trump to have such a horrible presidency that it, it makes it harder for people, right? Yeah, it says, and stay gay, of course, and stay gay. But I don't, I want to make it clear. I do hope the Trump presidency goes well for most Americans because I want family members to feed their kids. I want rent to be reasonable. I want health care to be available. Wishing that the Trump presidency is so bad people regret voting for him is just wishing that American families suffer, wishing that children suffer. We do not want children suffering in this country. They suffer enough. We need our children to be healthy and happy and joyful and to have options for their futures. And so that's not going to come by wishing that everything goes to shit. OK, we already had a really hard four years. We had a really, really hard eight years, really. OK, we've already been stressed as it is. Groceries are high enough as it is. So we're going to need to to root for some optimism here. And of course, everyone's goal of what that looks like is going to look different. And I just hope that it looks universally. Um, I hope it looks. You know, Good enough for most people. OK, we're going to go for most people. And I think most people in this country need to be served with the basics. That's what we're looking for. OK, just need the basics to be covered because they have not been covered in years. People shouldn't be having to get two to three jobs to maintain basic existence in America. OK, the U.S. dollar needs to figure itself out. And hopefully Trump is able to do that. He says he's a good businessman. Well, then prove it. OK, prove it. We're almost done with this speech, guys a common core of common sense. You know, we're the party of common sense. We want to have borders. We want to have security. We want to have things be good, safe. We want great education. We want a strong and powerful military, and ideally, we don't have to use it. You know, we had no wars. Four years, we had no wars. Great. Go solve Palestine, and then we'll talk about me liking you, maybe. Except we defeated ISIS. We defeated ISIS in record time, and, but we had no wars. They said, he will start a war. I'm not going to start a war. I'm going to stop wars. But this is also a massive victory for democracy and for freedom. Together, we're going to unlock America's glorious destiny. We're going to achieve the most incredible. True. Chad says Trump wants to deadass remove the Department of Education. So we're going to have more no, uh, no two teeth redneck meth heads. OK, first of all, shout out to my meth heads and these rural communities who have given no hope for their future, who have been told the only thing you're useful for is living in poverty and dying in trailer homes. You are worth so much more than dying. You are worth so much more. Nothing wrong with a trailer home. You are worth so much more than being forgotten and neglected by America. You are so much more than being forgotten and neglected by these rich Americans who do not give an F about you. Okay. And I want to make sure that the Department of Education is seen for what it is, a very important staple in moving America forward, including those people that are suffering the most by not having it accessible to them in a real way. These people aren't living in trailers being methods, like you said, for any reason other than the system has not put in place opportunities for them to get out of poverty. OK. Like at the end of the day, this is a systematic issue that is impacting white Americans and trailer parks as much as it is impacting anybody else. And these people deserve to have hope like anyone else, unlike J.D. Vance, who basically bragged about getting away from his gross relatives. You are not gross. You are in trouble because of the country you're in and because the system is not paying attention to your needs. OK, I do not want to reject anyone in any situation, especially related to poverty who are looking for hope but can't find it. So to reinforce that with that statement that Trump wants to take away education so people are more like X group of people, that's not helping. So you better reform your way of thinking and remind yourself 
that these are people who need hope. And that's why Barack Obama was so stimulating for so many people, because he ran on that platform. Right. And that's the thing is like they. People need something to look forward to. Everybody does. We need hope. Okay, so for people who don't understand, like a hopeless country is a is a direction like they don't have direction. Right. And Chad, who keeps saying they keep voting for the system, though, fuck them. You know what? With peace and love, you're going to time out. Okay, you're going to have to be timed out now because you're being a negative Nancy. Okay, you do not you deserve what you put into the world and nobody deserves anything. But if you deserve anything, it's what you've put into the universe. So if you're going to say fuck them, then fuck you, too. And no one brought that on to you but yourself. Okay. (laughs) Chad says you sound like Katara. Hope. (laughs) Shout out to Avatar the Last Airbender. Hope. (laughs) Stop it. Okay, I am tough right now. I'm going to slam you all into the ground. Put you in your place, bitch. Just kidding. We're aiming for Uncle Iroh energy, guys. We're aiming for Uncle Iroh energy. Okay. Okay. Chat says, sorry, Brittany. It's just that these people voted for him. Yeah, but they didn't vote for him for any other reason than they thought it was the right answer. You're acting like they don't think it's the right answer. And why do, why do they think it's the right answer? Because it's where they feel the safest. It's not... Anyone's fault other than, honestly, the way that they perceive media and the way that like we exhibit our energy towards people that they come to conclusions to go to the people they feel the safest with. Like at the end of the day, you can have your strong opinions and you can move in a direction you think is best. But ultimately, this is America. This is where you are in history. You can be mad at them or you can be mad at yourself for not accepting people as they are because that's their issue. Their issue is they're not accepting people for who they are. And neither are we. So you must learn to do it first. Which is very difficult. As much as I am an atheist, I'm also pro-religion if they want to be religious. Religious freedom is very important in this country. Do I think they're businesses and should pay tax? Yes, I do. But I also think they have the right to be religious even if their religions are homophobic. I just don't think they should get a tax write-off for their homophobia. Okay? So at the end of the day, with peace and love, it starts with you. That's why this is a philosophy channel. It starts with you. It has got to start with you. Be upset that humans are messy. But to attack and blame them for being human is to attack and blame yourself. And I want you to go home and sleep okay tonight and not be riddled with anxiety because somebody else who's just like you, who's worried about their family just like you, chose differently than you. Even if their choices are going to impact your family, your choices will impact theirs. We impact each other. As, the, as, as almost President Harris would have said, you didn't just fall out of a coconut tree. You exist within the context of all that came before you. This, this is the generational curse we're aiming to break. It didn't just start here. We are in a flow And it came from our ancestors way before us to come to this moment now. RL with the super chat says, but Brittany, they would say middle finger us too, like fuck us too. Why do we always have to be the bigger person? It's frustrating. It's frustrating and exhausting. Don't you feel the same with men? No, I fight to deconstruct my misandry every fucking time I feel that way about men because I know it's not true. It is not true that men are the problem. It is only true that the way we raise our boys are causing problems. Men are not the problem, but the way we choose to raise them is. Okay? The way we choose to raise our boys as misogynists, hateful, homophobic, afraid of their own feelings, that's on us. We raise these boys. We influence these boys. Society influenced these boys. Men are not the problem because they're men. They're problems because they exist in a system that reinforces misogyny and racism and gets amplified in the voting booths. So every time I feel like, God damn, these fucking men, I remind myself, hey, that's a problem because it's not fuck men. It's fuck the system, fuck culture, fuck racism. 
But racism exists everywhere. People exist everywhere. So at the end of the day, you can feel your feelings. And I think you should. I think you should sit in your living room and say, fuck these people. I can't believe it. And once you get that negative energy out of your like body, now when we're regulated, because that's dysregulation right there, girl. Once we're regulated, okay, how do I actually feel about people? What do I actually want for the world? How do I actually move the world forward? I'm not saying we all have to get along. I'm not saying you have to be best friends with a Trump voter. I'm saying wishing ill on them is not any better. Wishing ill on people is not being better. And yes, why do we always have to be the bigger person? You don't. You don't have to be. That's not up to me to decide. I choose to be as much as possible because it's within my values, which are a construct. I made them up. You can make up your own values. You can sink to their level. You can go massacre their children. You can discriminate against them. You can kill them in the streets if you would like. But I highly recommend you don't do that, even if they do it to you. Self-defense is different. But wanting to go and be as low as the bad characters you're so mad at, girl, what is the point of that? What is truly the point of that? How many anime do we have to watch? How many books do we have to read? How many great philosophers do we have to listen to to know that revenge is never good? Belittling people is not good. You can do whatever you want. I recommend you choose to be the bigger person. Because at the end of the day, you have to die knowing what you did. And I'd rather die, whether it's now or later, knowing that I did what I thought was right. And I didn't have to become an ugly person to feel better about myself. And I think you know that. I think you believe that too. I think you are good people who are in a lot of pain. You should feel that pain and then you should let it go. Okay? Chat says, I hate how mean they are to women, trans, blacks, and browns. They relish in the hate. They find comfort in the hate. I would love to love them, but they don't want my love. I, I think they hate out of fear and some hate out of a genuine disdain and disgust for people. And I think they're products of their environments. I never ask anyone to change or be different than they are. I never ask anyone to be different than who they are. But I make it clear about my boundaries when it comes to interacting with them. And I think that does a lot. I have seen a great change in people in my life when I've put down boundaries. And if they have chosen to double down and never speak to me again because of those boundaries, it also is okay. Because at the end of the day, we have about 70 years and then we're going to die. And I'm not going to spend my 70 years being an ugly person because the world around me is ugly. I do not decide to be a good person because the world encourages me to be that. I do it because I think it's right. I just think it's right. And I think you do too. I think you do too. I really do. You know? Chat says leftists can be just as mean. Your political views don't define you as a person. And that can be true too as well. There are some leftists for sure who get very ugly. And I think a lot of them are in pain. And I think a lot of people, most people, let's just say there's a pocket of people that are obviously like the worst of the worst of the worst. Okay, they're in their own camps. But most people genuinely, I think they think they're doing good when they're not. The road to hell is paved in good intentions. And a lot of people got a lot of good intentions, girl. They have a lot of good intentions. So we have to be aware of that. Look, I make sassy jokes. I make a lot of <laughs> maybe inappropriate jokes. And I say a lot of things that maybe aren't the best when it comes to always being peaceful. But in this moment, after an election where people are feeling a lot of feelings, I think it's necessary to make sure that we are being very aware how easy it is to fall and get tempted to be a cruel person. So I'm just making an extra effort today. Trust me, tomorrow I'll come back being sassy as always. But just today, I want to be very clear that this is a very tense time for a lot of families. And the best thing I can hope for is that whoever is president and then the fact that it's Trump will make this economy stronger and will keep families from struggling to feed their kids, will keep health care within reason and rents will be, oh, my God, maybe even affordable, maybe even affordable, which would be outrageous. But we would love to see it. Right. So the only thing I can do is hope for the best. And if you are so concerned about the world, make sure you're doing everything you think is necessary to contribute positivity to that world. But if you're afraid, imagine how kids feel right now. So please be the adult in the room and be strong for them. Because somebody has got to do that. 
Somebody has got to do at least that bare minimum for those kids because they are watching us. They're watching our streams. They're watching you in classrooms. They're seeing you in their homes. You have got to be a beacon of hope for those kids. Suicide is up in children, especially LGBT, LGBT kids. Don't let them kill themselves because the adults in the room have given up. Because you will contribute to their suicides with your negative attitudes. Okay? There's no reason for them to kill themselves in a world where there's so much potential. Okay? I'm so sorry to do this to you. We're almost done with his speech. Let's go. Okay, hold your breaths. Here we go. ...future for our people. Yesterday, as I stood at my last stop on the campaign trail, I'll never be doing a rally again. Can you believe it? I think we've done 900 rallies approximately from them. Can you imagine? 900, 901, something. A lot of rallies. And it was sad. Everybody was sad. Many people, I said, this is... Is his volume better? You guys asked me to turn it up. Is it better? This is our last rally, but now we're going on to something that's far more important because the rallies were used for us to put, be put in this position where we can really help our country. That's what we're going to do. We're going to make our country better than it ever has been. And I said that many people have told me that God spared my life for a reason. <laughs> Look, I don't believe in a God. And I don't think God spared Trump's life and took that firefighter's life. Okay. I don't think there was an exchange made. I don't think that's true. But I think this is a version of some people's hope is that maybe he lived for a reason. And I think a lot of people feel that way. Maybe I survived this overdose for a reason. Look, I don't think God exists, but the reason would be as important as, as giving hope to the future generations, which I think Trump isn't going to do for necessarily us. But he is doing it for a lot of people. And I hope those people, again, take this hope and use it to be more optimistic in their, in their communities. Because Republicans also need to work on being better community members. Okay, I know I don't have a lot of Trumpers in my audience, if any. And I know I don't have conservatives in my audience. But they also need to work on being better community members because this is what this is about. And that reason was to save our country and to restore America to greatness. And now we are going to fulfill that mission together. We're going to fulfill that mission. The task before us will not be easy, but I will bring every ounce of energy, spirit, and fight that I have in my soul to the job that you've entrusted to me. This is a great job. There's no job like this. This is the most important job in the world. Just as I did in my first term, we had a great first term, a great, great first term. I will govern by a simple motto. Promises made, promises kept. We're going to keep our promises. I don't, I don't know. That sounds a little scary for some of us who feel like maybe he shouldn't keep all his promises. So fingers crossed, maybe not all the promises he said, but. Nothing will stop me from keeping my word to you, the people. We will make America safe, strong, prosperous, powerful, and free again. And I'm asking every citizen all across our land to join me in this noble and righteous endeavor. That's what it is. It's time to put the divisions of the past four years behind us. It's time to unite. And we're going to try. We're going to try. We have to try. And it's going to happen. Success will bring us together. I've seen that. I've seen that. I saw that in the first term when we became more and more successful. People started coming together. Success is going to bring us together. And we are going to start by all putting America first. We have to put our country first for at least a period of time. We have to fix it. Because together we can truly make America great again for all Americans. So I want to just. Okay, you, okay, you said all. The trans, the blacks, is she black or Indian? Doesn't matter. Her too. Okay, he said all. That's a promise. Let's see if he keeps that one. I tell you what a great honor this is. I want to thank you. I will not let you down. America's future will be bigger, better, bolder, richer, safer, and stronger than it has ever been before. God bless you and God bless America. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, before they play copyrighted music. Okay, so here we are on this glorious morning, on this afternoon, and in this evening, depending where you are and where you're, you know, how you're listening to me. It's six, almost 6 p.m. where I am. I have had all morning to think about this and to really think about what I was going to say, because honestly, I, I can't pretend 
that I'm not disappointed, but I also can't pretend that I'm crushed because I'm not. I am optimistic and hopeful for the future because I know what I'm going to do. And I have confidence in myself to be optimistic for younger people to see, but also realistic that this is where I am in history. And that's the, that's the most amazing part about being alive is that you are living history and it's right now. And this is how it felt for all of our ancestors. And this is what it felt for everybody who came before us. All, all of the moments that you think, wow, I can't believe people live through history. We are doing it right now. So be grateful you saw an Indian and black woman run for the presidency. Be grateful that you saw a change in advertisement. We had a trans woman, right? On beer cans. Who would have thought? Okay. We saw so many good things happen in the last few years that might seem small, but they're big changes when you compare it, especially as a kid growing up in the 90s and 2000s. We saw so many things happen that are signs that we are heading into the future. Two steps forward, three steps back. Two steps forward, three steps back. Okay? That is life. And we are living it. So live it well, because they certainly aren't going to live it well for you. Okay, girl, you got to live it well for yourself. And remember that Republicans are people too. And they genuinely are just doing what they think is right. Some people aren't. Some people are being malicious. But a lot of our families are, are doing what they think is right. And who can fault them for that? Who can fault them for it? No? Shadow B says, Brittany, I think you meant three steps forward, two steps back. No, no. I meant two steps forward, three steps back. <laughs> You know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic. Okay. <laughs> no, no, we're going to do it. It's just not, listen, I can't say, I cannot predict that the future won't have women getting their right to, right to vote revoked. I can't, I can't tell you if the future is going to involve, you know, slavery again in the United States. I mean, people are people and it's very possible. All I'm saying is it's going to be what it's going to be, girl. It's going to be what it's going to be. And you're going to have to do what you're going to have to do with that. So live life well, because you only have one of them. And do not let the people that you think are the worst in the world allow you to cry one single tear in their name. Okay? But also, it's okay to cry, girls, okay? We all have to cry sometimes. So if you're in that mode, if you have to drive your car and turn up the music and scream on the top of your lungs, do that. At least you're not storming the Capitol, okay? If it means crying in your shower, hey, better than not storming the fucking Capitol. Better than storming the Capitol, okay? I can't believe they did that. And they're like, we're reasonable. Anyways, no judgment, no judgment. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're judging. We're judging. All right. Any thoughts? Anything we want to say? Anything you want to talk about regarding this before we move on? Because we're going to move on. Okay, we are going to move on with our life because this is not the end of our life. This is just the beginning of our 2025 and it's going to be a great year. Okay, what are your thoughts? Anything you guys want to share? <sighs> Chat says I'm not going to move on. Well, stagnation is a decision. You know, stagnation is a decision. You know, Hedda says Project 2025, is it happening? Who knows? Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. Remember, for some people, Project 2025 is a dream. Lots of people want it. And if America wants it, America's going to get it. And this is reality. Right? And for, I'm not ending stream for the record, guys. We're just going to move on to other things after this. So just FYI, remember that people really do want Project 2025 in the same way that people wanted slavery. People want things especially at the expense of other people because they think it's right because they think they're entitled because they think it's within what they deserve. So be careful when you think you deserve anything because everybody does. Everybody does. No. How do we not be mad at those people? That's a great question. And that's a really difficult thing to answer depending on where you are in life. But I'll tell you this. Being mad at people for doing what they think is right isn't as efficient as it sounds. It is more efficient to radically accept that these people are making decisions that work for them and their life 
even if you could imagine it ever working for them or their life or your life. And that's the thing. Like, that's the thing that I think is so interesting about people is sometimes they do vote against their best interest. I think it is against your best interest to be angry. Not to feel angry for a moment. It's not against your best interest to be honest about your emotions, but I think it's a best, against your best interest to stay angry. I think it is better to move with peace and in with love. But also, depending on what your goal is, that anger might be the fuel you'll need to wake up tomorrow. But you have to make a decision. Is anger what gets you up in the morning or is it love? And that's only, that's, that's a personal journey. It used to be anger for me. I used to get up in the morning and work a bunch of jobs and do as much labor as I could because I was angry. But one day I decided, man, this anger is not working out for my skin. I am not sleeping. I think I'd like to wake up and use something else. And it took me a long time to stop being angry. And it's not that I don't feel that emotion sometimes because it's appropriate to be angry sometimes, but I don't live my life on anger. And I will tell you, my life is so much better. I treat people better. I treat myself better. And I'm able to accomplish a lot more with being optimistic than I ever was being angry. But it can't be a fake optimism. You have to actually decide to believe in people and believe in yourself. And I think that's really hard. It is really hard to believe in yourself. And that's why a lot of people choose anger because it comes so naturally and so quickly and so easily, <laughs> which I, I can't fault you for. I can't fault you for being angry when it's so accessible. You know, Taylor says toxic positivity and radical acceptance are different, very different, very different. So make sure you're radically accepting and you're not just fake positivity, like being fake positive, you know? Um, will the Democratic Party lean, uh, learn anything from this? You know, that's hard to say. I watched FD Signifier stream this morning and his consensus, which I thought was interesting, is that the Dems are going to go more centrist, more right in general to get that sort of centristy vote for next time that they're probably or maybe will learn something. Who knows? It's hard. I, I was watching a lot of panels. I was watching a lot of people talk about how the Democrats never learn anything. I think the dilemma is that we have to accept that this is where we are first and foremost. And we have to accept what do we also struggle? Well, how do we struggle in learning? I always relate this back to myself because that's the best way for me to humanize people. Where do I struggle with learning? What are the, where, where, where are my shortcomings, right? Where are my shortcomings? And how does that play in, into the world at large, right? Centrism, did Trump win because of centrists? I think America is more centrist than we process. Also, not everyone who was eligible to vote bothered to vote, right? Like, not everybody participates in the, the election. Lots of people did not participate in this election. So just on the voters who came out, I think we have to acknowledge that a lot of them were conservatives. Some of them are centrists. And a lot of them were center-right. Okay, and that's America. America is struggling with racism and homophobia and transphobia. Like America is so worried about the culture war because they're so concerned with like 1% of the population. They can't even focus on the economy. So I think America, it, it, you know, it's depending on what bubble you are on the internet, you might think it's more progressive or more conservative or more X, Y, Z. But I think as a whole, this is, this is life, you know? This is life and this is the world we live in, right? So you have to accept it. The reason I do philosophy instead of politics is because when I was involved in politics, honestly, didn't have enough hope or optimism for me. Politics was great when it came to making money and doing dirty tricks to win elections, but I don't want to fight dirty in my life. And don't get it, don't get it twisted. All these people are playing dirty, even Harris, because that's how you win elections. And that's life. And so if you want to keep playing dirty in your life, you can. I'm not trying to do that on my own, right? Desi, thank you so much for the super chat. Says, glad I found your channel when I did. Would have reacted much differently before. Hey, I love that. And isn't that true? It's all about perspective. It is all about perspective. And we have to remember to remain the adults in the room, 
who stay consistent and steadfast because if everybody starts crumbling, well, what good is that going to help anybody? Okay, we talk about community. We talk about making an effort. Then why are you crumbling under the pressure? Let's go. Because this is the pressure of reality. And thank God you're not feeling the pressure that Palestinians are feeling right now. Because God damn, you would crumble. Okay, all we have to deal with is an election. They have to deal with a genocide. So not to compare pain, because all suffering is, is valid. But just a reminder that what you have to deal with right now is an opportunity to show strength, not weakness. Compassion, not self-loathing, okay? Yeah, yeah, membership for 17 months says everything is going to be okay, y'all. Everything is going to be okay because life is what it is. Life is what it is. Chat says, so why does radical acceptance feel like letting bad people win? Radical acceptance is accepting the fact that life goes the way it's going to go. And you can only control what you can control, which is very few things. Maybe barely even yourself. Right? Radical acceptance isn't letting the bad people win. It's accepting that this is just what life is. This is what life is. We must accept what life is in order to move in a direction of optimism and pos positivity that's real. Right? I'm not saying we should celebrate when bad people win. I'm saying you should accept that that is what real life is. Bad people win, good people win. Bad people win, good people win. Good people die in the name of what's good. Bad people die in the name of what's bad. Like we, it's just life. It's not about not standing up for yourself. It's not about not defending yourself. It's not about accepting it like you're condoning it it's about accepting where you are in history you can't control it but you certainly can contribute better to it and that starts with your attitude Val says, thank you for covering the election didn't expect to feel this uh, this affected this morning or that affected this morning with the election results probably going back to therapy hey shout out to therapy is a great tool you know hey thank you membership for 16 months says like the stream thank you thank you guys Look, that's what it is. Use your tools. But this is life. And look, remember, this is all dependent on how you think you got here to this planet. This is all very dependent on what you believe about life. Do you believe in a God? Do you believe in evolution? What do you believe in? Right? Because I believe in evolution. So I think I'm an evolved animal, which gives me a lot of relief. And the fact that I am just like any other entity organism on this planet, I'm just existing and trying my best. And God damn it, if that's not good enough. And it is good enough. And if more people were doing it, I think it'd be a little bit better. Okay? We'd be a little bit better. You know? Chat says, does being angry at the bad people change their power? It's a normal reaction, but over time it becomes unnecessary. Exactly. Like, we're going to feel angry. But don't live your life angry. Okay, we don't want our parents to be angry. You ever had an angry parent? Did that serve you as a child, having a parent that was angry? Did it serve you as a child to have a parent that wasn't present? Did it serve you as a child to have a parent who wouldn't get up and go get a job? Did it serve you to have a parent who wasn't there consistently and emotionally available? Okay, now examine yourself and realize I'm the adult in the room. Okay. So we are not going to do that for other generations. We're going to work on breaking those generational curses. And we might only break 10% of it, but goddamn, that 10% means something to somebody. It means something to somebody. So know that it's, it's worth it. Your work is worth it. Breaking a generational curse 10% at a time is better than 0% at a time. Okay. <laughs> That's the point. So forgive me for not being negative and giving up on my life because Trump run this presidency. Can you imagine giving up your life because Trump? For a man everybody hates so much, he sure controls a lot of your life. Absolutely not. A man with hair that bad? Absolutely not. A spray tan that bad? Absolutely not. If I'm going to ruin my life for anybody, it's going to be a drag queen named Chapel Roan, okay? And maybe not even her. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke, okay? I'm making a joke. Everybody laugh. It's a joke. 
Okay. All right. All right. It's very funny, very funny, very funny. Okay. Oh, shout out to FD Signifier in chat. Love the stream this morning. You got me through my coffee. I appreciate that. We really loved the stream. Appreciated that. A lot of my viewers watched it as well. It was really nice. Kayleen says, I'm more sad for the people that could potentially be directly hurt by certain policies. Doesn't mean I give up or let it own me, but I don't want to dismiss the understandable fears of others. And don't. Absolutely don't. Feel your feelings. Talk to your therapists. Embrace your communities. Love the people around you because right now that's the greatest message you can send. In the same way, if Kamala had won, it might have been tens talking to your Trump family. They might feel the same way about you. So do what you can and show love when possible, because that's all we can do to move, I think, in a direction of positivity. And again, like. I'm not telling you not to feel your feelings. Trust me, the moment I woke up this morning, I got a text from my bestie. I saw it and I was like, oh no. I looked at the results. I did feel it, a little twinge of, okay. But I really do believe this is where we are right now in history. And it's still better than where it was. And that means something. It has to mean something that we are moving forward. It has to mean something that we are getting better, even when it's rough. It was never gonna be a perfect uphill battle. We were always going to hit road, you know, bumps. We were always going to have problems. The wheel was always going to fall off the car. We just got to figure out how to put the wheel back on. In hopes to bring America closer to being good for most Americans, if not all. So remember, we're not leaving Trump voters behind. We are bringing them with us. We're going to scoop these people out of poverty and uplift everybody, even Trump voters, because that should be the platform that the liberals or leftists are platforming on. We are not leaving them behind. We're going to bring them with us. And we can only hope that they too keep all of us in mind and that families have an easier time this next four years, even though I know it's hard to think that they could, but we're going to hope for a good presidency. Even though I know for you and me, we're all going to roll our eyes a little bit. That's what we can hope because I'm just thinking about the kids. That's who I'm thinking about. I have to. As somebody that's chosen not to bring a baby into the universe, as somebody who made that decision because of economics, because of my chronic illness, because I'm disabled, because I'm dealing with a very confusing time in history that might not be safe for my kids in the world, I know that every decision I personally make is about children, even if I'm not going to have one. And that was a part of me breaking that generational curse. Because I know having a child when I can't be exactly there for that baby's growth in a way that I feel is necessary that's me stopping that generational curse from happening. Because again, I don't think it helped any, any of us not to have present parents. But present parents are also, they're impacted by the system. The system creates parents who cannot be present. It takes a lot of effort to realize that the system is playing much more of a role in our lives than we like to give it credit for, including those poor Trump voters that hope he's going to help them. Let's hope the system changes to actually help them. But this is just four years, hopefully, assuming Trump isn't a dictator. And then we can see what we're going to do. And the truth is, what do you think is going to happen? J.D. is going to run, probably. But who's going to be the Democrat? Is it going to be Harris again? J.D. versus Harris? Could be interesting. And that's something to think about. But I'm just thinking about the kids. I want those Again, if you guys missed it, I just said it a few minutes ago, LGBT people, children, babies, teenagers, okay, ba like I'm going to call them babies, but they're teenagers. They're killing themselves because they have no hope. So we have got to be the adults in the room who remind them that they have a reason to keep existing. And this is really me speaking to my child self, speaking to my queer self that tried to unalive all those times because I was a young gay kid in a conservative home. I'm speaking to her and I want her to know you better stick around, girl, because there is so much to look forward to. OK. Phoenix, thank you so much for the gifted memberships. Let's go. Um, Alter with the super chat. Thank you. Says, girl, you don't live here. You think this is funny. Stop. I. I know you're hurting and I know you sent me that so I would see it. But that's OK. If you need to. If you need to be angry, you can. But if you think I'm not fighting for America while living in Croatia, that's not true. Because my family still lives there and I still pay tax. I'm still an American. 
I still vote. I still, no matter where I live in this world, will be an American. Okay? So you can be angry if it makes you feel better. You can even take it out on me. But the truth is, why are you taking it out on anybody? An American is an American at the end of the day because we're participating in that system, even when I don't live there. And by the way, I might live there again. But you have to understand, I can't live there as easily because America is not as accessible to, say with me, immigrants. I have to immigrate my husband to the United States. It takes paperwork. It takes money. We were quoted $7,000 to start that process. I would love to see America get better, especially for immigrants, especially for people that are married to people, especially for families. So you, you better believe that I have a lot of hope for America. Okay. I have a lot of hope that we can eventually make it a place that we can both call home. Thank you for the $2. <sighs> oh yeah, and good point. Chad says, I wish people outside the US didn't have to think about the US election. Oh, oh don't get it twisted. That people around the world are impacted by America because it's a superpower. Lots of countries, including Palestine, are very much paying attention to this election. They are absolutely going to be impacted by the decisions that America makes. So don't get it twisted that everybody is paying attention to the U.S. election and we are all going to be impacted. So again, you can say you don't even live here. At this point, we have to acknowledge that America is absolutely going to, this is going to impact everybody. And that's why we're all waiting. We're all waiting to see, okay, what happens? How's the dollar? How are our relationships with people around the globe? We have so many wars happening right now. We have to make a decision that's not going to be easy as a, as a country. And we're going to see if this administration is going to contribute to more deaths or help stop them. If Trump went and saved Palestine, because Palestine needs to be saved. It needs to be saved by an impact we made with our allies. If it could do that, it would mean a lot to not only Palestinians, but people whose relatives are in America. H3H3, Lena's parent or Lena's family in Lebanon had to move. They had to get away from Lebanon because it was being bombed. Americans are being impacted and so are their families around the world. Okay. I would love to see a Trump that saved Palestinian lives. Obviously, I assume he's going to support Israel. But I can hope for a future anyways that thinks about Palestinian lives. He is very pro-Israel. I, I know. I know. Yeah, and Ukraine, too, is suffering. I mean, don't even get me started with the civil war happening in the Sudan, which we obviously, I don't even know how we would engage in that. 130 women killed themselves to avoid getting raped by their captors. The world is suffering. And human beings are participating in that suffering. So don't participate it. Don't continue participating in it, Okay. Z King says Rashad Crenshaw. Shout out to Rashad. I watched his stream as well last night. I was watching Wick, Rashad, Philip DeFranco, Tom. I was just like, I had like four streams open. Rashad Crenshaw just uploaded an interesting video about interviewing why Trumpers are voting Trump. Normally not a fan of those types of interactions, but I trust Rashad. Okay, might sound interesting. Might sound interesting. Okay. Abby says it's out of our hands now. All we can do is deal with our feelings and be the best version of ourselves and help your communities if that's what feels powerful to you. If you feel very fulfilled by doing that, I recommend you do that. I always say, look, even if you're not a very community-oriented person, you can still be a good community member. That's what I try to do. You guys know I don't really like volunteer anymore, like clean up streets or protests or anything like I used to way back in the day. And I find that this thing I can still do is be a good community member. And I think that that is so meaningful to our neighbors Talk to people in your communities, get to know people and realize that everyone is worried about groceries. Everyone is worried about rent, no matter who they voted for. There is a concern. Excuse me. JJ, welcome to memberships. Phoenix with the super chat. Thank you so much. Says, um, 
I'm in SA and I was worried. Wait, SA. I'm sorry. I don't actually know who that is. Hold on. What's SA? Country. South Africa. Love it. Of course. <laughs> Brittany and her geography. Thank you. I was worried. Thanks for the stream, Britt. You're doing great work. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Shout out to South Africa. We'd love to see it. A Amber Lynn, too, with the super chat. Thank you so much. The power of pussy wasn't enough. You know what, girl? We're getting there, though. We're building our stock right now. Did you see Ethan call watching Philly D? I saw, like, he called. Did Ethan call Philly D? Or I saw him watching it. I saw him and Eila looking pretty sad. I'm engaging less and less with H3's content, obviously. But uh, I did watch a little bit of their stream yesterday, just like 10 minutes or so. How do we change the culture of anti-intellectualism? Um, that's really difficult to say because uh, that's really difficult. It's it's so um, oh, that's a hard one. It's so it's so based off the bubble's perception of what that means and their relationship to it. As the great Jordan Peterson would say, have you fought your dragon today? Listen to me. Listen to me. Dress like Ethan was betrayed by the Marxists, Lenin, fascists. Queer, trans, Machiavellian mothers. What does it even mean to be an intellectual? As Jordan would say, you know, what does it mean? Is it a dragon? <laughs> I'll never get over Peterson and his dragon. It's my favorite. Is, do you have a dragon? I have a dragon. <laughs> I love dragons. <laughs> I love bad dragons. <laughs> It's not funny. It's a very serious conversation we're having right now. I don't know. I think you have to move people in a direction of curiosity and they have to want to know more things and they have to be open to hearing things that deconstruct their sense of being. The construct that they've, they've really built around themselves, they have to be willing to see it crumble. That's really hard. Most of us don't want to do that. I think 99% of the people on the planet do, do not want to deconstruct their constructs. It's too hard and it's too scary. And then you'd have to have different friends and different groups after that and maybe move your whole life and maybe move countries. And it's, it's a lot of stress, you know, to ask the world to deconstruct. So, you know, I want to move, a, I want to move the world to be more curious guys. The world is so cool and so interesting and so diverse and so nuanced. And it is really horrific, by the way, the more I learn about people, I'm like, man, humans are really an amazing sort of destructive species that evolved all of these years to do these amazing and horrible things at the same time. But I think I have so much more compassion the more I learn about the world. And I think that curiosity is really the pathway to compassion, which means to suffer with, right? It means to suffer with. Compassion is really putting yourself in someone's shoes. And that's really, really hard to do. I mean, a lot of people that are very sympathetic, but they lack like a deep sense of empathy, which to be fair is a skill. You have to learn how to be empathetic in a lot of ways, right? I love Discord sending Jordan Peterson gifts. Classic, classic move, guys. Classic move on the Discord. Okay. Jazzy says it's not just about intellectualism issue. It's no party caring about the poor and working class party. They're both into helping the rich get richer and leaving people behind. Well, hmm. Hmm. Uh, hold on. How do I feel about that? Okay, from a philosophical perspective, I do think everyone is doing their best, even when it's not good enough. I do think we have a perception that people could do better because we're delusional as a species. But I don't think that's true if you look at yourself. If you just use yourself as the metric, when did you ever get better in life? Because every time I ever got better in life, it was a painful process. That, that, it, that really required an insane amount of growth. Like talk about growing pains. It involved a lot of growing pains, right? So I'm not sure, or I'm not convinced, and maybe it's my 
you know, who knows? Maybe I'm too neurodivergent to understand that the neurotypical person actually has a much easier time at growing and chooses not to. But when we're having these conversations, it's hard for my brain to process this reality where all of these people are just simply anti the poor rather than afraid to be the poor, avoiding the problem because it's too difficult. The system is against you for sure because the system is flawed because we're flawed. We made it. It's hard to say really how you would actually dissect this. I'm not sure. Let's see. Between the Dems and the Republicans, just because one is prioritizing social liberties more than the other, they still aren't prioritizing the working class. That's true. Obviously, they're not, they're not prioritizing, quote, regular people. But if I'm going to be honest with you, I don't think regular people are prioritizing themselves as well. I think the world is a reflection of us as a whole. I think all of our life is a reflection of us as a whole. And I think as a whole, working class people have neglected themselves. They have neglected their curiosity, their education. They have neglected their own interests. They're in marriages they're not happy in. They have lives they don't want. They had kids they never wanted. I mean, we're looking at people who are oppressing themselves so hard that they're convincing themselves they didn't actually download Grindr during the RNC. I mean, we're looking at a community of people that don't want the coal industry to go out of business because it's all they know instead of adapting and going for something better. At the end of the day, I really think the world as a whole is in many ways neglecting itself. And I don't want to blame anyone. Nobody's at fault for being a person. You're all just living and having an experience. Nobody's at fault for being a person. We are simply experiencing life. And I think you can change that experience with enough of, enough of a perception change, right? I think humans are just simply experiencing. And so it's really hard for us because you have to deconstruct their whole experience and who came before them. Like we really are products of so many other people that came before us. So I ask you again, who are you when you're alone in your home? Who are you when you're with your family? Who are you when you're alone with your most intimate thoughts? Who is that person? And if that person is what you would call good and worthy, then I would say show more of that person or be, be kinder to people using that person's perception, right? Like that person is who's important. Because a lot of the time when we're socializing, we're not that person. We're the person we want, who, who, we're the person we think people want to see. And I think that causes a lot of people to choose jobs they don't want, choose lives they don't want, have kids they don't want, live a life they don't want. And how much more peaceful would the world be if we actually just did what we wanted, assuming what you want is actually just to be a regular ass average good person. You want safety and housing because I do think that's what most people want. I am convinced that most Trump voters, most of them, even if they're homophobic and transphobic and racist and all this stuff, they just want to be able to feel like they pay rent. They just want to work 40 hours a week and feel like it's enough. People are very interesting when they feel like they don't have enough. People are very interesting when they feel like I can't feed my kids. Why do you get to feed yours? That's why I say fear is the root of all evil, because fear is a dysregulation. You are dysregulated. You have to be regulated when making big decisions, especially about people's lives. Especially about people's lives. You know? All right. Do we have other thoughts about this? Sonic says, hearing you talk about the election is comforting. This is helping me feel less tense. Let's go. That's what we want. We want if we want to be regulated we want to be balanced we want to accept that we have strong feelings but we're not going to go into dysregulation if we do not a big deal we can always come back from it but we do not want to make decisions when we are dysregulated we want to make decisions when we are calm and thoughtful and compassionate okay we want to make good decisions and we start with ourselves how do i make good decisions today that's where i would start today okay so i ate my food I worked out, let's go look at these arms, bro. Worked out, ate my food, spent time with my partner. We did hypotheticals today for like an hour. We had a nice hypothetical conversation about going back in time. That was fun, okay? Have a little calming moment. And look, after this stream, when I'm done doing this, I'm gonna have to call some people. We're gonna feel very passionately about the fact that Trump won. 
And I'm going to have to do some emotional labor for my loved ones because they are going to be worried. And I'm going to remind them the same way I'm reminding you, take a deep breath. This does not define you. You exist outside of these political systems. You are so much more than how the world perceives you. You are doing fine and you're going to do fine tomorrow. And the next day after that, even when the world goes to shit, you are going to do fine. Even when stress is eating at your body and it feels like it's going to kill you, you will make it past this. Just like our ancestors did. Just, just like our ancestors did so you could be here today. Okay? So don't get it twisted that after this live stream, I'm not just going to go, you know, TikTok scroll. I got to call some people. Because some people in my life I know are struggling right now. And I know that they need to hear it from somebody else who says, hey, we're going to be fine. Like my friend said this morning, why can't we have low interest rates and trans rights? Because we're not there yet. But we are so much closer than we've ever been before. And that's what matters. Period. Okay. Chad says, I feel like the most distressing thing for me is not understanding why people voted for Trump. Hey, great point. Actually, hear me out. If I could encourage you to do one thing, if I could give you one tool in your toolbox, meditate on why people vote for Trump. Hear them out because it will make so much sense to you when you hear it. Because I know, I say it all the time, why would you vote for him? But I know why. In the same way that I know why any of us do anything. Okay? Because it makes sense to our brains. Why does it make sense to your brain? I really do believe that it takes a very specific opportunity in life to be more than the person you were raised to be we're all raised to be somebody and it takes a very specific personality type to be different than the way you were raised how many people go well that's just the way i was raised i'm just the way my mama raised me i'm just that's the way i was raised it takes a very specific person to be more than how you were raised and sometimes you're raised well well that's how my mama raised me i have good manners that's how my mama raised me and that might be good but a lot of us love the way we were raised and it takes a lot of work to break a generational curse and to say, I'm going to be more than the way that I was raised. Remember that these are people who want the past. They want the tradition. They want what felt familiar. They're afraid of change. They're afraid of it. And that's why breaking a generational curse is so off-putting to your families. Shh. Don't bring that up. Why you got to talk about that? Can we just ignore it? Why do you always have to make a mess? Why can't you just get through dinner without bringing it up? Why can't you do this? Because they just want to live their limited 70 years on earth and die with their family secrets coming with them. But the family secret doesn't stay with them. They end up in your children and your children end up on a couch and they end up paying $145 for a 45 minute therapy session or they kill themselves. Okay, so we're not going to kill ourselves today. We are going to stay healthy and happy for the future and for the present. And because we are the adults in the room and there are children watching us. There are children watching you. So be the adult in the room. Okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 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 dun.